Are you aware of the fake foods you might be eating every day? It's kind of mind-blowing when you realize just how many items on the grocery store shelf aren't quite what they seem. I've got the tea on a few of them for you today, and trust me, once you get the 411, you might just reconsider what you toss into your shopping cart. So, let's kick things off with canned or packaged tuna. I mean, tuna is pretty basic, right? Should be a no-brainer. Unfortunately, it seems like some companies played fast and loose with the label. During an investigative spree, one company found that a whopping 21 of the brands they checked out didn't even have real tuna in them. Crazy, right? Instead of that familiar fish we love, these cans were packed with something called Escalar. Now, if that doesn't ring a bell, you might know it by its other names. Butterfish or oil fish. Here's where things get wilder. Japan, known for its seafood delights, banned Escalar way back in 1977. Why? Well, they claimed it was too toxic. And if the toxicity doesn't make you raise an eyebrow, the side effects just might. Diarrhea and, erm, um, anal leakage. Yikes. So if you crack open a can and the tuna is eerily white, like super opaque white, that's a red flag right there. It's probably not tuna. Number two, fake steak. We've all heard about the infamous meat glue, but do we really know the deets? Some restaurants, in a bid to save some coin or get creative, have taken to patching up pieces of meat with this so-called meat glue. Its fancy name is transglutaminase. Now, this isn't just some culinary art project. There are legit concerns here. First off, the process means the meat is being handled more, which means more chances for bacteria to hitch a ride. And here's the kicker. The makers don't need to disclose the nitty-gritty on how this glue is concocted. Initially, the magic ingredient was blood plasma from cows or pigs. Over time, they shifted to just fermenting bacteria to churn out the enzymes needed for this adhesive. But there's a haze of mystery around it all. So, next time you're dining out and about to indulge in a juicy filet mignon, it might be worth a quick ask. Hey, any meat glue in this? Rolling in at number three is the breakfast superstar maple syrup. Now, when you picture pouring that amber liquid onto your pancakes or waffles, you're probably thinking you're dousing them in pure tree sap goodness. Hate to burst your bubble, but a lot of commercial maple syrups are actually maple-flavored sugar syrups. Some companies opt for dark brown sugar, others for refined white sugar, and they just toss in some maple flavoring and voila, instant maple syrup. Oh, and let's not forget the dreaded high fructose corn syrup making an appearance in some brands. Because these knockoffs don't have the natural antioxidants real maple syrup boasts, Manufacturers have to add preservatives like sodium benzoate and ascorbic acid to ensure it doesn't turn bad before you've even finished half the bottle. And now, for number four, let me introduce you to the mysterious world of the so-called crab sticks, or imitation crab. Ever wondered why it's so much cheaper than real crab? That's because it's often labeled as surimi, which is basically a fancy term for fishy leftovers. Think of it as the fish version of a hot dog. They mash up different kinds of fish, throw in some starch, could be from potatoes, wheat, corn, or even tapioca, for good measure, and spice things up with a little MSG for that flavor kick. But here's the fun part. It doesn't actually taste like crab. So in comes the crab flavoring, along with some protein boosters like egg white or soy protein. To sweeten the deal, they add sugar and sorbitol. Let's not forget the oils, usually soy or other vegetable varieties. And because everyone wants their seafood salad to last forever, not really, but you get the drift, they sprinkle in a dash of sodium benzoate, the piece de resistance, a touch of coloring to give it that fresh from the ocean look. So the next time you spot imitation crab at the store or in a sushi roll, you'll be in the know about its origins. All right, are you keeping up? I'm always amazed at the ingenuity, or perhaps audacity, of the food industry when it comes to these clever substitutions. Stick around as we keep exploring this intriguing world of food doppelgangers. Number five, extra virgin olive oil. Now, I've previously delved deep into this topic in a video, and what I found might just ruffle a few feathers. Ready for this? About 80% of what's labeled as extra virgin olive oil is pulling the wool over our eyes. Extra virgin is the creme de la creme of olive oil. It's swiftly processed, cold-pressed, and packed with antioxidants. When you get a whiff or a taste of the real deal, it's a sensory treat. It has this tantalizing fresh smell. And when it hits your taste buds, there's this lively grassy note and a zesty tickle at the back of your throat. 
That's when you know you're getting those sought-after phytonutrients. But the imitations? Oh, they're bland as bland can be. I personally had my olive oil awakening in Italy, and it was a game-changer. Now, just a sniff is all it takes for me to spot the fakes. And here's the kicker. Many of these imitations aren't pure olive oil. They're often mixed with oils like canola or a hodgepodge of other oils. This means you're often getting an oil that's been heated, stripped of nutrients, and, well, isn't what it claims to be on the label. Number six, Parmesan cheese. Now, the very name should make you think of Parma, Italy, right? I can almost picture it, relishing authentic Parmesan cheese in a rustic Italian setting. Sadly, what we often get, especially in the U.S., is a far cry from the real thing. Instead of pure Parmesan, many products contain a blend of cheaper cheeses like cheddar or even powdered mozzarella. But wait, there's more. Some contain added cellulose, sounds harmless but it's essentially wood pulp, and mold inhibitors. Here's where it gets wild. The FDA actually greenlights the sale of this Parmesan. The justification? Cellulose is from natural sources. But when you realize that it can make up to 20% of the product, it's kind of mind-boggling. That's right. Nearly a fifth of what you might be sprinkling on your spaghetti could be wood. Sneaky, right? It's a genius way for companies to cut costs, but not so great for us consumers seeking authenticity. Number seven is the sunshine in a glass. Freshly squeezed orange juice. I mean, who doesn't love the idea of fresh oranges being lovingly squeezed every morning to produce that tangy, refreshing juice? But here's the thing. Not all commercial freshly squeezed juices are what they seem. The reality is that many of these juices get cozy in humongous storage tanks for several months. And to make sure they don't go bad during this extended vacation, oxygen, which gives the juice its fresh taste, is stripped away. So what you end up with is a flavorless liquid. But the brands have got that covered too. Before packing, these juices get a facelift with orange flavor packs, which are engineered to make the juice taste fresh. The irony, right? So the next time you take a sip, Remember, it might not be as fresh from the tree as you imagined. For our eighth revelation, let's talk about a morning ritual for many. Coffee. But not the freshly brewed kind. We're diving into the world of powdered instant coffee. Now, to many, it's a quick pick-me-up. To others, it's a sacrilege to the world of coffee connoisseurs. But regardless of which camp you're in, there's something you should know. Some instant coffee blends come with an assortment of unexpected ingredients. Think cereals, caramel, starch, malt, and even figs. That doesn't sound too much like coffee, does it? And then there's a slightly more concerning aspect, acrylamide. This chemical forms when coffee beans are roasted, but guess what? Instant coffee tends to have more than double the acrylamide content than its brewed counterparts. And here's the real kicker. Regular consumption of acrylamide isn't great news. It's linked to nervous system issues and might even up your risk of certain cancers. So, while a cup now and then might be okay, it's something to think about if instant coffee is your daily go-to. Man, the things you find out when you dig a little deeper into the food and beverage world. Always good to be informed, though. All right, stay with me. There's more to uncover. At the ninth spot, we have the blueberry products. Ever grabbed a blueberry muffin from a coffee shop, anticipating those juicy bursts of real berries with every bite? Well, you might have been met with a sweet deception. Many products that shout blueberry from the rooftops are giving you the old bait and switch. Instead of the real antioxidant-rich berries, many products serve up imposter blueberries. Crafty concoctions made of sugar, corn syrup, starch, hydrogenated oil, artificial flavors, and of course, that telltale blue dye. It's as if they invited a stand-in for the blueberry to the food party, hoping we wouldn't notice the switch. But hey, now that we're onto them, those faux blueberries won't get past our discerning eyes. Number 10, white chocolate. But hold on to your sweet tooth because there's a twist in this tale. Despite its name, white chocolate is a bit of an outsider in the chocolate family. Why? Because genuine chocolate has cocoa solids and our creamy white counterpart skips this entirely. Instead, it dances to the tune of cocoa butter, sugar, and milk products. While there's nothing inherently wrong with this, the issue arises when brands cut corners. Some manufacturers, especially in the more commercial arena, think it's okay to be stingy with the cocoa butter and swap it out for cheaper fats. The result? A white chocolate that might feel waxy in your mouth and leave your taste buds wanting more. Oh, and there's a fun tidbit for our last revelation. The FDA doesn't have a stringent definition for white chocolate, so it becomes easy for brands to blur the lines. 
It might be wise to check the ingredient list the next time you treat yourself to this sweet delight. Woo! There you have it, a deep dive into some everyday items that might not be as they appear. The world of food and drink is fascinating, and it never hurts to be a bit more discerning, especially with what we put into our bodies. I hope this video has been both informative and intriguing for you. Now before we wrap things up, a quick reminder. If you found this video enlightening, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel, Finance Daily. Your support keeps us going and helps us bring more insights like these to you. Plus, I'd love to hear from you. Have you come across any of these food doppelgangers in the grocery stores? Which foods have you been avoiding and which ones have made it into your cart? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. A big thank you for tuning in and staying with us till the end. Remember, knowledge is power, especially when it comes to our food choices. Catch you in the next one. Cheers!